Hi, Jalisa. How are you? Oh, no. And, I, and I, I'm like, Anastasia, I want to make sure that I get your name right. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I am so great and so excited to be with you as a guest on the Clubhouse. It's my first time joining Club. I the know. Clubhouse. We have to take it easy on you. You're, you are a I know. newbie. <laughs> I am. But hey, I could adjust. I learned quick. I'm a quick oh. learner. Um, it's pretty late where you are, right? You're in France. No, no, I am back. I am back in uh, in LA. I arrived few uh, two days ago, but I keep posting my uh, uh, my trips uh, from my trip from uh, Bordeaux. I had an incredible time, and I'm still dreaming of that place. Yeah, there's a lot of history. I was on your stories. You were sharing a lot. It was pretty interesting. You know what? I felt that it was so interesting the way they they perfected this uh, uh, technique on making wines. And, and I went to the best of the best and, and kind of I felt like resembled to the way we make products. We want to use the best raw materials. We want to to create the best and and come with the, uh, so many things that uh, will have the best result for our clients. And I think they do exactly the same. It's unbelievable how um, the desire to create something amazing for the customers it's kind of similar. It doesn't matter what you do, wine or cognac or makeup. No, absolutely. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Um, yeah. So if those if those of you who are just hopping in tonight, we are here with Anastasia Soiree. She is the CEO, the brow queen of Anastasia Beverly Hills. We're actually today recording this um, room. Um, I meant to add it to the title, but we're not going to be recording any of the um, questions. We're just recording the beginning because this is for the Life of a Makeup Artist podcast, which is my podcast. Um, and those of you who are accustomed to the beauty room, um, you guys know I only have a few questions because I want you guys to be part of this conversation. I want you to, you know, ask questions to Anastasia. I know it's not every day we get to talk to you, but we already know how you have changed the game, the beauty game, the brow game. Um, and I'm so excited just to learn more about you and to have a conversation. So let's just get right into it. Um, uh, my first question is, I know that, you know, I obviously know a lot about you, but I did some digging and you immigrated from Romania um, and you eventually went to beauty school. Can you share a little bit more about what brought you to that decision? Well, um, I left the communist regime in Romania in 1989 and I wanted to... I wanted to be significant, to do something that I will love and that will be important. And I always had an interest in beauty, going to beauty parlor with my mother since I was five. Um, but um, I was an immigrant in the United States, and and the, um, probably the job that I could have without speaking the language was uh, an esthetician. And it was a while working that I noticed this gap in the market that no one pay attention to the eyebrows. So in Romania it was a typical way to uh, have your brows clean before you get a facial. And um, uh, I had this stroke of inspiration that um, I could do the same using the golden ratio that I learned in art school and I could apply to shaping brows, bringing balance and proportion to my client's face. So, but the salon that I was working wasn't convinced that brows were worth offering as a separate service. And that uh, wasn't enough uh, of an interest from the owner. And I put my notice and I rented a room in another salon. <laughs> and this is how it all started. No, I love that. I feel as though, you know, when you come to this country, because I'm from Trinidad, you kind of have to make it work. You make things work. You have to do what you have to do. Um, so your beginnings um, of your, you know, brow journey in Beverly Hills, you worked with so many celebrities. Who were some of your early um, clients? So uh, when I worked at Giovanna Utah, was this boutique hotel on Melrose Place, um, I started working immediately with the, some of the, the most incredible supermodels. Because in the 90s, early 90s, the supermodels were on the cover of every magazine. Uh, 
So I was so lucky to work with those gorgeous, incredible 20 years old um, Naomi Campbell, Stephanie Samer, Cindy Crawford, uh, then uh, as well Michelle Pfeiffer, actresses that they were, to me, I, I felt like was, I couldn't believe that I was able to work with those women. Um, their beauty was absolutely something that I have never seen before in my life. And uh, I start working and, and I, it, this is how shaping eyebrows and, and doing their facials, I think it kind of gave me the opportunity and validated my work. And this is how everything started. They start realizing that eyebrow was changing their look and, and kind of uh, their unique, beautiful bone structure will create a sense of balance and harmony. So they will come back, they will send their friends. And in 97, um, I opened a flagship store on Bedford. So this is how the eyebrow um, started. Oh, uh, I can't imagine how crazy it might have, must have been. Like, I think I'm, I'm sure you, you know, you know, all the celebrities that you work with, but you probably have lost track of how many because, you know, I feel like once you are the it person in an area, it's just like nobody wants to go to anyone but you because now you're like doing Justin Bieber and Oprah. I'm like, that's insane. But to be honest with you, I mean, from the beginning, I worked with uh, so many celebrity and I felt and I'm still today so grateful for them validating my work. But I was so I, I was so intrigued and I wanted so much. I, I pressure every single client that was in my chair. To me, every client was a star. I wanted her to have the best eyebrows possible. I wanted my work to, to be the best. It didn't matter who it was in my chair uh, because uh, I, I took pride in what I did. I wanted to be the best in what I did. And I never ever thought of, oh, I want to be famous or I want to become this huge uh, um, company. Of course, I wanted to be significant, but I never ever dreamed that I would be where I am today. But my passion to to perfect my skills, I think, was uh, was at the beginning what I aim for. And um, I, I, I owe to all my clients, the everyday clients that they save their money, probably a student or anyone that will want it every month to come and get their eyebrows done. And of course, all the celebrities that always they talked about uh, uh, me and uh, I am forever grateful. Um, I love that. I I think, uh, you know, that the mantra of every client is treated like a celebrity. I think that work ethic is what really takes you far. And we've seen that manifested with, you know, where the brand is today and when you are where you are today. So I love that. Um, for those of you just hopping into the room, we are chatting today with the Anastasia Soiree of Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, of course, you guys know how we do it here. We're here for a good time, not a long time. I only have a few questions. Feel free to raise your hands if you have any questions about her or the brand. I'm going to bring you guys up. Um, but the next question I actually have is I want to talk about the evolution of the brand because we've seen this brand grow. You guys have had ups and downs. Um, and the product that brought everything into fruition was Dip Brow. It touched everyone's makeup bags, their makeup kits. What exactly made that product so iconic in its? Well, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the evolution of the brand. In 97, I opened my own flagship store on Bedford Drive in Beverly Hills. Uh, the landlord didn't want to rent me the space. I stayed in his office in, in his office for two hours, just trying to convince him to rent me the space. Um, he couldn't believe that I could pay rent with doing eyebrows. But the day I opened was a line around the block, which he could see from his office window was the best. I told you so that I could ever imagine. And when I started <clears throat> eyebrow, excuse me, eyebrow products simply didn't exist. And to create the perfect shape eyebrow for my clients, I had to fill in the brows with a homemade mixture of eyeshadow, aloe vera, and Vaseline. But of course, they would go home at the end of the day, wash it off, and they wanted something that they, they could do daily in their beauty routine. So I started 
completely from scratch. There were months of traveling in Italy. I started going to the manufacturer, to the lab, labs in Italy, and I start formulating this uh, product that... Uh, when I launched it at first in Anastasia uh, Beverly Hills, the deep brow was carved out completely new category in the beauty industry. But the deep brow actually, um, once launched, was too early. In, 90, in 2000, 1999, basically, we, we launched the product line, including a pomade. The technology wasn't advanced enough, so it wasn't... Um, uh, it wasn't a waterproof product, number one. And number two, it was a little too early for a consumer to kind of comprehend, oh, do I need to use this pomade on my eyebrows? So the the one, the makeup artists, professional makeup artists at studios, they used to love the product, but the average uh, consumer wasn't really um, interested in. So we had to pull back and we... We, um, in 2014, we released it again. Of course, the technology was more advanced, wasn't waterproof, and became a cult classic. So to answer to your question, why is, it, why is it so iconic? Is the, it has the ability to sculpt, melt-proof um, eyebrows, dimensional eyebrow, according to the three points of my golden ratio technique, creating a sense of balance and harmony. Can you but tell us course, more about that? I think we yes. all can do with some brow Um So what exactly the golden ratio is, <clears throat> we have an app. I don't know if you know about our app. It's a great, <clears throat> sorry. No, no um, not familiar it's a great, with that. Okay. We have an eyebrow app. If you go on an app, uh, you could download Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's a brow <clears throat> app. And um, the brow app brings the shaping experience, experience from our salon to the golden ratio shaping method into the hands of everyone. So in the private space, you could do the you could do your own eyebrow. So uh, we did studies and we conducted uh, on thousands of brow customers. We discovered that only thirty five percent of uh, uh, the customer will do their brows regularly, and the other sixty five percent. Um, they didn't because they were not confident enough. Eyebrows, I have to say, they are challenging. But I think during the pandemic, people really engaged and they committed to get the, really down to a science, their eyebrow technique. But in the same time, they, were, they start being confident that, hey, I'm going to do this. And with the help of the brow app, it's a lot easier. It's an, um, not only the technology, it's really a turning point tutorials where you have augmented reality and takes you step by step, guiding individual how to, mo how to will show you exactly how to do your eyebrows according to the proportion of your facial structure. So the app bridges the gap between the goal and the get. So uh, it's it's a every day you could use it. It's a mirror function fu functionality that will allow you to see yourself in any shape or shade, and you could you could see what color you you want, what shape you want. Uh, it will give you the ability to try different shapes and different color, and I think that's wonderful. And then to talk about the what exactly golden ratio is. When you are in the mirror, this is exactly what this app will do based on the golden ratio, will take the measurements of your face and will tell you exactly where your eyebrow should begin and should end. But normally, if you do not have the app and you want to look in the mirror, you will um, take a pencil and above middle of inside of your nostril, straight above, your eyebrow should begin right there. Um, in um, corner of your nose, corner of your eyes, the, that should be the end of your eyebrows. And tip of your nose, middle of your iris, that should be the highest part of your eyebrows. So that is basically the perfect um, eyebrow shape uh, using the golden ratio and um, finding the perfect shape for your bone structure. So what about the sisters, not twins rule? Like if my brows are looking a little wonky to the side, 
Can I just say it's the sisters, not twins? <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny, yes. Well, well, very few people have perfectly symmetrical feature brows. So the reason why we don't have exactly the same eyebrows are not as much as eyebrows, but is the muscles and the bones. And most, I mean, sometimes our bones and muscle don't pull the same way on the left side versus the right side. Like for instance, if your eye vision is better on the right side or worse on the left side, then you will tighten the muscle more. So the left side um, will, will get tighter, will be lower, and the right side will be higher. I mean, I studied at eyebrows for years, and I needed to understand why I used to have three generations of customers. So the very young, like let's say 18, 50, and 80, mother, I mean, daughter, mother, and grandmother. And you could see, of course, it's our DNA, how going from 18 to 50, you will see a shift on the the eyebrow, the one eyebrow. And most of the time, the right eyebrow is higher than the left eyebrows. And now with the technology, believe me, watching the your phone mostly with the left hand, you use your left eye much more than the right eye. So the muscle on the left eye gets tighter. So your left eyebrow will be lower. So it's because of the muscle is not as much because of the eyebrows. But um, uh, the, I mean, it's so much to talk about oh the eyebrows. God. But the goal, the goal is to, perf- to, to balance the eyebrow. And by filling them in, you are able to kind of make them the same. Like, let's say your right eyebrow is higher than the left eyebrow. You will feel the left eyebrow a little bit more on the top and less on the bottom. And on the right one, you will feel more on the lower side and less on the upper part. Right. So it's, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's a definitely making wines uh, is difficult, but doing eyebrows, the perfect eyebrow is as difficult as well. It's definitely uh, a science. But you know what? I never thought about how phone usage can affect your, the way that yes, you're, yes. I didn't think about that at all. Oh my God. Yes. No, what do I, I, do? I, <laughs> I spend so much time and I was trying like why majority of people when they get older have the right eyebrow higher than the left eyebrow. I, I start talking with the um, neurosurgeon. I start talking with so many doctors, uh, heart doctors, because I thought, oh, maybe we have the heart on the left side. So the muscles here, the, the, uh, the um, uh, blood is pumped much more on the left side than the right side. So I was trying to find the exact explanation. And who do you think gave me the perfect explanation? An ophthalmologist that explained to me that if your vision on one eye is obviously lower than the other one, the one that you you have lower, you don't have 20-20, so uh, you tighten the eye because this is how you try to see the letters better, um, that is going to lower the eyebrow. So that's why the left eyebrows most of the time is lower than the right eyebrow. So maybe you should switch the the phone, not only on the left hand side, you should put it on the right side just to kind of use both uh, um, eyes the same or or try to get to fix your vision. Oh, or maybe not be on your phone as much too. (laughs) Well, that's impossible, Um, you know that. Right. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, I, I'm going to try, but that I, I mean, my mind is blown. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I actually want to ask um, about and thank you so much for those tips, by the way. Um, you've expanded uh, you've expanded the brand much further than brows. But, you know, when you came into the game, it was all about brows. Was there a point where you felt like you needed to d- diversify the brand where you felt like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to be known for brows only. Like we can do other things. Like, was there any struggle, um, you know, through that process? So first of all, I want everybody to know that in 2000, we launched with a full makeup line because I never worked in the beauty industry. I almost jumped on the middle of the ocean with a life, without a light vest. So I had no idea that I have to pay for the makeup artist when I sold the, the makeup in the department store. So um, 
I realized that I will not be able to pay because I was doing eyebrows. I, I had no investor. Nobody will invest in me. I mean, at that time, people were not, they didn't believe in, in uh, beauty business that is Saudi. There were just very few companies that they were major, such as L'Oreal, Esther Lauder, but nobody will come with a, another makeup line. So um, I had in Nordstrom's 20, I started with 20 brow studios and the esthetician used to do eyebrows, shape eyebrows and teach the customers how to use the eyebrow products. So I was able to keep that section, but for the makeup, I had to pay makeup artists uh, there and, 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 I, and I couldn't afford. So I had to pull back the makeup we sold it for a few years in the salon. And um, of course, my my entire concept about shaping eyebrows and 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 makeup is like in art school. I, I study art and my art teacher always told me that if you want to draw a portrait and you want to to change an emotion, you change eyebrows or how you you create on a white piece of paper how you create dark and uh, like cheekbones and eyes, how you create from a flat white piece of paper, you are able to create this 3D uh, uh, look. And I realized by sh using the shade, using the pencil, you use more pressure or less pressure, or you use the, uh, the color of white color of the, the paper, and you will be able to create this 3D effect. So I, I asked myself from early time when I started, like, why we use makeup? I don't know if people really, they use makeup because they saw their mother or they've seen a makeup artist, but I needed to understand why we use makeup. So when I launched the, the concept and the golden ratio technique was based on the golden ratio. So basically the reason why we use makeup and is to create an illusion of perfection. So eyebrow is one, the most important feature on our face that creates balance and proportion. So makeup is kind of the same. And, and I wanted to, to give the opportunity of our customer to use the makeup and to, to, of course, with Instagram, we were able to put tutorial in 2012 when we first launch um, our Instagram, we were able to, to connect with customers, with people that we wanted to educate about our products and not only what was so great about our products, but how to use the products to create their perfect look. So this is how it all started. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean like I you talk four hours. No, yeah, I, I love it. But four you, hours. sorry, I think the brand. No, I love it. I, I think the brand came in just at the perfect time, like the rise of social media, like as social media grew, like the yeah. brand grew. And it's like you can't Correct. say that you use brow products without knowing, you know, who Anastasia is. So um, my last question um, actually is that your um, I love that your daughter plays such a vital role and you do in in the brand. How did that all come about? Is she, you know, just at your side, like helping you with everything? Or was it that one day she was like, Mom, I want to do this, too? Like, how did that come about? Uh, no, <laughs> no, she didn't <laughs> want to work with me, but, um, I was working very long hours and, um, to be able to see her because I didn't have too much time to spend with her in her free time. I used to ask her to work part-time at the salon, um, at the front desk. So I think that experience for her was amazing by the way, until seven, five years ago, I, five, six years ago, uh, I still work in the salon. I shaped eyebrows, believe it or not. I mean, very, very few people know this, but maybe my clients at the salon. Um, and she used to, to, I think, was a great experience for her to understand the clientele, what the clients like, what they don't like, how you talk to them, what is important for them and what is not important for them. And then when over time she kind of started taking more responsibility, she moved to the corporate office 
And now she's the president and chief director and absolutely brilliant with her product development. Uh, she really spent a long time and I wanted to make sure that she understands the, the passion, the, the what we want to, to give to our customer, that we needed to make the customer happy. So uh, we basically, we work for our customers. This is what I always used to tell her. And she was the one that introduced, insisted to set an Instagram account. And we saw the opportunity for the brand to expand through social media and build a special relationship with the user. So knowing that not everyone will use makeup the same way and uh, will need to be customized from every face, I think we wanted to in- encourage everyone to express themselves with uh, to create diversity and everyone to to create what they want, what what is pleasant for them. So now we have almost 20 million followers and we took the theory of golden ratio and expanded into so many other products through social media, which one of the first one, the contour kit was kind of revolutionary. Not that the contouring didn't exist in makeup artist world, but we were the first one to put it in a kit and through social media kind of bring attention and bring awareness how important contouring was. And then Claudia now launched uh, her uh, Norvina collection. It's a line that is a little professional uh, creative makeup, a little more refined and um, uh, kind of gives to the professional or or, um, makeup lovers with a lot of colors to um, dip into the first time or create whatever they want. So uh, I'm very excited about her, uh, the, the passion that she has. I'm, I'm really proud of what she was able to, to achieve and to get to this point in her life that uh, her work is, we, we, we work because we, we, we love what we do. And that's to me, is the most important thing in life. I think it's so beautiful how, you know, you can, you know, at first you probably were feeling so guilty about working so much and now you can have your daughter like next to you and like understanding like what goes into it now that she's older. Um, I mean, the Novita 3 palette is my jam. So um, I love that. I love that you, you you know, you keep it in the family and she really is, you know, integrated into the business. Um, Actually, um, just want to touch on real quick um, because I know you mentioned you guys have 20 million followers and I believe that Anastasia now is you guys have the most UGC you just user generated content one of the most um ever out of all beauty brands um and I yeah. think that's amazing yes she's she we have a studio and she's creating all the content I'm, I mean of course we have a team an incredible team but she comes with a concept and the team is putting everything uh, to reality I and it's she, for her volume five she created a street in Tokyo. It was incredible. I, I went there and I could not believe it, what she was able to do. It was incredible. I'm really proud of my daughter and um, proud of my entire team. We have amazing people that we work with. So it's it's all amazing. <laughs> I love that. Um, Anastasia, you're the best. I'm going to pass it quickly to Amani. Thank you, Jalisa. Anastasia, it's so great to have you on Clubhouse. Thank you for, you know, gracing us with your presence. So I love brow products, but eyeshadow is like my first love. So my question <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah, favorite eyeshadow. You all know what we're talking mm. about. Um, yes. It was Tamana your very first like influencer collaboration? Because I remember that palette so vividly. Um, so if you could say if Tamana was the first and... What made you want to collab with an influencer? I think you were one of the first brands to do it, and it was just amazing. Um, when we started in 2012, we, I mean, there were people that they loved. Very few, they were professional makeup artists, uh, but there were people that they loved the makeup. They, they tried to use it. We started sending them the makeup, and I, I could see the, the, the progression of, becoming really incredible artists. I mean, you could look today, I have days when I, you know, go through Instagram and I, and I am amazed how incredible people are so talented. 
Um, so they practice, they practice. And, and of course, in 2012, if you remember, um, the iPhone didn't have a very good camera. So we discover Sony 6, the camera that had Wi-Fi, and you could take the picture and download on your phone very good quality pictures. And we start sending or sharing uh, about the, the camera with people that were following us and the quality of their pictures and the lighting and everything became so much better. And we loved uh, uh, the, the artists and that's Tamana was one that I admire so much. Um, she had, um, she was very good with hair, with makeup and, and we wanted to do a palette with her. We kind of were the first brand that uh, kind of um, had a, a palette with um, uh, um, somebody on on social media, and then uh, I think we did with Amrezi um, and uh, Makeup by Mario, but uh, yeah, was um, was super authentic. Was the love the was the love of uh, sharing our makeup with the world and and introducing artists that they were incredible talented. I think this is what it was. Yep, that set such a great precedent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Imani. That was a great question. I want to invite Kayla. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much. This is Kayla speaking. Uh, thank you, Jalisa and Anastasia. This is an absolute pleasure. Um, Anastasia, I would read about you. I remember in YM in 17, uh, and you, even though you had the supermodels and the celebrities, your brand always um, it felt really warm and accessible. So even at, you know, 13 years old, I always felt like if I were to visit the U.S., I could pop into your shop and, you know, you would do my eyebrows. And yes, when your I would. Products, be- yeah. <laughs> and like even from, you know, I remember reading this when I, a long time ago. And then when your product started selling near me, I already trusted um, your name and your brand. So I was wondering, as you started to expand and grow your brand and bring other people and more in, how did you keep that really high end customer experience? Um, it, it, that was our goal from the beginning. We wanted when when I started working with my daughter, um, I explained her that what is the most important thing for me is the quality of our product should be incredible. And what was different for us is I will not only make the products in the lab, but I will come to the salon and try all the products because it's one thing to look at, for instance, I will, I will give you an example, to look at the brow powder that is taupe, let's say. Um, it looks taupe, and maybe if you put next to mine, it will look taupe. But when you use it on the customer, on the skin, the natural oil combined with the weather, with if you are in a dry climate, if you are in a, in a humid climate, the color oxidizes or changes. And that taupe, it looks maybe too red or it looks too um, green or it, it is very, the, the product on the skin uh, reacts completely different. And believe it or not, even to this day, Every batch, every order that we place constantly, they will not go in production until I will approve the batch. Because again, uh, all the products that will will get into a powder or a pencil or in any any product, they are from the earth. They are natural colors, and their their original color, a blonde or a, a yellow or a red. Um, uh, raw materials could be from a different region and could have a different tone, uh, not like the the one that was the standard. And we always have to adjust colors. So I'm so hands-on because the, the quality is so important for me and I have to be consistent with. And Claudia does exactly the same. So we uh, take this very serious and it's a lot of work. It's not easy, but um, we, we take pride on that. And this is what separates us from the rest, I think. Uh, I, it's important for me. 
for me and my daughter is very, very important to keep the quality because I think the customer is so smart. The customer is very educated. The customer knows. Even if you do not know when you use it, you use it and you think, oh my God, I understand now why, why I like this, this brow is. I, I know it. It's the consistent, the way it, it feels. The, when you brush, it doesn't, the brush doesn't take away or the, the, the softness of the brush cannot be too hard, not too soft. I like every single element. It's important and we look and we check and we want to make sure that every single batch is exactly like the standard that we have. So it's a lot of work, but we are passionate. Thank you so much. You've held so much control um, yes. this whole time. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. This is Thank, you. Thank, speaking. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kayla. That was such a great question, and I love your voice. So calm. Um, I'm actually gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna invite Kathy. We have around fifteen ish minutes, so um, obviously not rushing anyone, but I want to make sure that we kind of get through everyone on stage. So, Kathy, I'm gonna pass it to you, and then we're gonna go to Brittany, the Skin Bay. Thank you, Jalisa. <laughs> Thank you, Anastasia. I can't believe this opportunity to talk to you. This is incredible. Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us on the clubhouse. Oh my goodness, I couldn't miss this. Um, <laughs> Anastasia, your brand yes. is known worldwide for its perfection. Like everything you produce is literal perfection. Um, your makeup line and your brand, your bra products is actually what took me from having like no natural brows. My brows are terrible to people stopping me in the street to ask me who did my brows and I'm like I did with these products so thank you for that and for the wide range of colors and textures to create the dimensions of my brow make it look as natural as possible so thank you but I, I did want to ask you um, if you were to extend, extend your brand outside of makeup uh, what would you create? Um... First of all, I leave. The, the reason why I work so hard is just for people like you to tell me that they cannot live without my products, that I transform their eyebrows. They are able to, to be confident and feel beautiful. This is what I work so hard for. Um, thank you so much for all the compliments, uh, Kathy. Um, and now to answer your question, um, many, many years ago, we had a skincare line as well, because remember, I used to do facial body waxing and eyebrows, but I started doing facial and body waxing. And uh, we had, I couldn't find the, the best eye cream. And I took, a, um, I went to a lab and I said, I want you to put this ingredient and this, I give him a, a list. And he made me uh, some, um, uh, eye cream, face cream, um, some serums. So we had a, a makeup, I mean, a skincare line. And we sold it at Nordstrom's for a little bit, but we didn't have enough money to support for the marketing, to bring awareness. And again, we pulled that and we sold it in the salon for a, a while. And then we didn't produce because the the amount of uh, products order were very low. You can't sell that much in the salon. And the minimum orders are at least 2,000. And um, uh, this is what happened. But if I will expand, for sure, I will, I will expand into skincare. It's okay. very important. I'm going yeah. to be cheeky and say I'm looking out for your skincare line in the <laughs> upcoming years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your kind words. Thank you, Kathy. Um, Brittany, welcome. Hello, hello. This um, Everyone before me has already touched on a lot that I wanted to say, but first and foremost, thank you for the room. Anastasia, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Brittany, but I am an esthetician and a professional makeup artist and it's not many products that you find with that sort of duality that can fit each client so I want to say thank you for that I use your products in my treatment room and when I'm on set so 
it's really, really good. I, I appreciate you. It's, uh, the stencils actually helped me uh, kind of curate my own brow for my clients because I was a little hesitant when I'm on the treatment. You know, when my clients are on the of table, course. I'm like, man, I hope I get it right. I'm doing it upside down. What am I doing? So thank you so much for the stencils. They really, really helped take the fear out of it. Um, she kind of spoke on the duo uh, pencil or the duo tool that I love, the 7B Duo. Um, is there any more or maybe like in the works of more tools that are that kind of perform with the same duality where I can sketch or shade and then comb through like the spoolie end of that duo brush because I'm looking to add more to my back bar when I am in the treatment room and I would love it mm -hmm. if I could come and kind of have the same line being fluid because I also recommend my clients get the tools that I'm using so they can maintain and still feel empowered to make the same thing happen that I do on the table at home. Mm -hmm. So my name is Brittany and I'm absolutely listening. Oh, thank you so much, Brittany. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the stencil. I'm so excited that you you did that. I hope you will get the app because it will be so much easier for uh, training the customer how to use the products. Um, you should use the Anastasia Beverly Hills app. It's free and it's so easy to use. Um, and um, talking about the duo, uh, there are not Two, we don't have anything in work, but um, I will definitely think of what you are saying. And um, I, I don't know what products we could do in duo. Uh, we have the brow, brow powder duo because it's a lot easier to do the ombre eyebrows. Um, and as you know, my, my entire concept about doing eyebrows, you need to use a lighter um, color as a base and then you use uh, the same color of your hair uh, brow um, which is a little darker one shade darker than the base to create hair strokes so that you create a, a, a dimension and the eyebrow looks more natural instead of flat um, solid eyebrows it looks more natural uh, but I will definitely think about this with the dual um, sides product. I will definitely think, and, and I, no, no, we don't have anything in work right now, but if something will happen, you will you'll get the credit. Well, thank you. I'm super excited. Um, I am always excited that I can use treatments and products in the treatment room that I can give to my clients because yes. And one of the most important things that we do as service providers is we empower, we enhance, but we also empower. So I never want to feel like, you know, while I appreciate that they book consistently, thank you to any clients in the room, but also I want you to feel empowered enough to say, you know what, what Brittany did made me feel so good. I can't wait to go home and mimic it. And I know your products, especially from you sharing your story, you saw a need in the market, not just for focus, but you saw it for, you know, it was a, a matter of the heart. So I appreciate oh, that from one service pro provider to another. Thank you so much. And I'm complete. Uh, thank you so much, Brittany. And yes, uh, this, the, the entire Anastasia Beverly Hills line was born uh, for the desire to empower the clients, to give them a chance to have beautiful eyebrows. It, again, it was authentic, was nothing behind that other than empowering women. Because I think it's the most beautiful and fulfilling uh, 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 think that when you have a client in your chair on your bed and, and she looks in the mirror and she loves you because you made her look beautiful, you get all that good energy. I don't know too many jobs that they get, you get back so much, uh, um, so much greatness. So yeah, thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Brittany, for your question and your energy. Um, you are so appreciated. Feel free to ask your question. Hi there, Jalisa. Yes, I made it and I'm so happy to be there here. And hello, Anastasia. It's such an honor to speak to you. I first want to just start off by saying that how much confidence your products give me and truly give me so much joy. Even if I'm having a bad day, I know that if I just use a little bit of Brow Wiz, clean up the brow, I know that my mood will instantly change. But my question for you is, do you see the brand expanding in more complexion products? I know that you guys launched the ABH Foundation in 
2019 but i was just curious do you guys have maybe any like concealers maybe like any cream products or what is there anything in the works i mean again i'm gonna i'm gonna say that we at this moment we probably we work on so many products and it takes very long time sometimes two years three years four years to to bring to the end and and if we are not a hundred percent in love with the products we don't make it we, we will will never sell the product um, of course we are working in so many other things and i hope you will see it soon um, but um, probably the pandemic was something so difficult so difficult for us because the manufacturer um, had of course that everybody was close was very difficult to have we had to postpone so many lunches um and and it was very difficult because usually we'll fly if it's new york or it's italy or whatever it is the lab uh we fly there to approve the colors and the consistency the products uh and it we couldn't do it um and uh the, to give you an example, this is what happened with the face palette. We had to approve the darkest one, um, which was the wrong color, because we couldn't, to do it through pictures was very difficult. You can't do products in, on Zoom. And uh, we went back and forth, back and forth. And the, uh, what is happening in Sephora, you have a gondola, and the gondola has to be up at a certain time. And you need to have the products finished to a certain way in advance to ship them. We had to airship the products, and it's very expensive because they are very heavy. Um, and we had to to close and to say, okay, we'll not fight because we went back and forth, back and forth to create the darkest uh, bronzer, and it it was not what we wanted, but we had to accept it because the launch was set. At a certain time, on and on, and the gondola couldn't be empty. So there are many challenges, and we went through a difficult time with the pandemic. But I'm sure after this, everything slowly is gonna get back to normal, and I'm sure you will be happy to see many launches. Thank you so much, Anastasia. I truly can't wait for your products that are going to be coming out. And definitely with all your formulations, you can tell how much hard work and effort goes into each product that you release. But thank you so much. It was truly such an honor to speak to you. Thank you, Alexandra, so much. Thank you for coming up. Hi, Elena. Hi, Jalisa. Thank you for having me on stage. Anastasia, I remember coming to you as a client when you were at the salon on Wilshire many, oh many years God. ago. <laughs> and I had just moved here. I'm a, I'm a makeup artist in the industry, in the film industry here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I had saved up my money to come see you. Oh, yeah. And I just wanted to say when I was there, there was many celebrities sitting in, ch in chairs waiting for their turn to see you. And the respect that you gave to me as just a client that you didn't know me compared to sitting next to JLo, you know, I was like blown away that, you know, you had me at two o'clock and you were going to see me at two o'clock and JLo was going to wait till she was going to be seen at three o'clock. So I just wanted to say that that really resonated with me with my career. So when I work with celebrities now or non-celebrities, I treat them all the same. So I just wanted to say that that always stayed with me. And I was oh, very excited you. when you launched and you became who, you, you know, the company that you've become now. I'm really excited. And I see all your products and I use all your products to this day. Thank you so much. Oh, Elena, thank you so much. I mean, I remember those years and I will never, ever forget the love that I got from my clients, everyday clients, again, and I said it at the beginning, I am forever grateful for my, the celebrity clients that I had. They validated, they, they helped me a lot, but everyday clients, to me, they were as precious as any celebrity, and I respected everyone. I respect my celebrity clients. I respect everyday clients because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you want to do. We all want to be treated the same. 
And I will tell you a funny story right now. I don't know if we have time, but you ask me to talk, yeah. I'm going to talk. So when I started, my, probably I was in LA for like three years. Everybody was talking about this famous hairstylist that was working with the biggest celebrity. And so I went there. It was like $300 or 400 I'm talking about 30 years ago, $300 for a haircut was like 3000 today. So I saved my money to go there and get this haircut. I am not exaggerating. He never looked into my eyes. He never said, like, he was, like, constantly talking to the client to the left and to the client to the right uh, that they were in different other chairs. He, he will, I, I didn't feel like he treat. look, I pay for your time. You give me 100% attention. Because I pay for your time. This is, I am here and you need to do this the right way. I didn't feel that was, I didn't feel like was right the way he treated me. And I thought to myself, I will never ever treat my client like this because it doesn't matter who you are. You are a client and you have to treat it with the same respect like everyone else. It doesn't matter. I, I, it, it really, you could be, I don't know who, I will treat you with the respect that you deserve because you are my client and you want to be as beautiful as everybody else. You want your eyebrow to look as beautiful as everybody else and everybody deserves that. And But thank you so much for, for reminding me that years and years ago, we, we met each other. A pleasure. Oh, to, you're to welcome. To you. You're welcome. It was a joy to, to be, you know, at the beginning, to see you at the beginning. And yeah. I just, I will always remember the kindness that you treated your clients, especially yeah. me. You didn't, you know, I wasn't a celebrity. I was just a young makeup artist starting out and uh, I loved it. Thank you so much. And, and, and this is, this is a lesson for everyone that is in the business. Uh, first of all, the way you talk with people, you never know who they, how they could impact other people, how they talk, how they will. First of all, people, makeup artists in the beauty, in the film industry, they supported me for so many years because they work with the celebrity. They talk. You never, you should never, ever uh, undermine anyone that is in your chair because at one moment, one time, they will make a difference. I will give you another example. Was a store in Beverly Hills, Merlos uh, Avenue, and everybody, Fred Siegel was the, the name. Very hot and very, uh, I, I barely could make money to buy maybe a, a, a pair of jeans there. I, I couldn't afford. So I walk in the store one day. I was in my, um, my um, robe. Uh, I was in lunchtime from the salon. And I walk in, the, the salesperson kind of measured me from head to toe. She looked at me and uh, like very, uh, in, a, in a kind of not pleasant way, uh, greet me. And um, she asked me like, where, 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 where do you work? And I said, well, I'm a facialist here at Giovanna Utah. And um, she already made up her mind that I cannot afford to buy, but I wanted to see what is so special about Fred Siegel. So I walked in and I said, well, I wanted to see a dress or I don't even remember what. And she said, oh, you cannot afford that. You know, the, the pretty woman moment <laughs> that uh, nobody wanted to, to help her to pick up her clothes. Um, so I was in tears or like why she needed to treat me like this. She doesn't make more money than me. She's a salesperson. She should be nice to me. 10 years later, my daughter wanted to buy a pair of jeans and the only store was that store. So I walked with, uh, she said, mom, let's stop there. Cause I want to pick up this pair of jeans. I'm like, no, I don't shop there. It's like, come on, just in and out. I walk in. They checked me the same way, but at this time I was decked out. Walking, she's again the same question. What? Uh, so, what do you work? What do you do? And like, it's not your business. I wanted to say, but anyway, <laughs> and and I walked in and I said, it is. It took me ten years 
10 years that I could buy everything in that store, but I will not, I will not support the business that it treated me or not only me, every, because if they treated me, they treated other people the same. This is not the way you want to treat your people, your customers. It's, I totally, totally, you remind me right now of so many memories, Elena. You shouldn't do that. Well, <laughs> I hope the that they're good the memories, story, though. The, very good. The moral of the story, if you are in a beauty business, please treat every single client with the most respect and try to make her beautiful, her or him, to, to, be, to do your best job. They are your walking advertising people. Wow. I mean, just so you know, Anastasia, my phone is blowing up. Everyone is so in love with you, Elena. Thank you thank so much you. for coming up. Um, it's thank such a you. testament. You have to treat others that you the way that you wanted to you want to be treated. And in this day and age, you really have to be cognizant. It's like it doesn't matter who you are, who you know, how many followers you have. It's giving no. keep the same energy. You know, it's just a, a general, you know, respect um, for yeah. everyone. So, Elena, I actually I, I really, really appreciate you coming up because those stories you know we love yeah. it um thank i want to invite jacob <laughs> of course thank always you. um you guys know the beauty room is for everyone um jacob shout out to you because i'm sure it's like 4 a.m where you are <laughs> it is yeah I, <laughs> i'm in the uk um no. and so it's like 10 past one in the morning but there was oh no way God. in hell I was going to miss this conversation is there absolutely oh. not not today <laughs> oh thank you Jacob so much no my pleasure lovely to meet you by the way um I have a multitude of different things I want to ask you however we've got one and so I'm going to make this one count um you've spoken a lot about you know your business ethic the way you treat people your background how you started and I think I feel like you're just such a multi-hyphenate such a whirlwind and such a powerhouse for women in the business industry and I'm just I'm constantly flabbergasted by the way that you've paved um modern day beauty for a lot of people in fact I would say everyone in this room and more um but one thing I want to ask you is that I love getting to know people um in a very primitive way and actually I really want to know not anything terribly crazy, but what was your first experience with beauty? Because I've just started out in makeup. I normally do skincare and I've just explored the makeup area and brows are my favorite feature on my face. But I really want to know what your first experience of beauty was, what your first experience with makeup was. So yeah, that's my question for you. Well, I grew up in Romania and uh, of course we didn't have access to makeup products, skincare products. The esthetician used to go to the pharmacy and make a specific cream for every customer. You couldn't go to a, a department store to buy skincare. That was a long time ago, but this is how it was. And as makeup, I remember my mother used to have um, a guy, um, um, a, a very talented painter that used to buy his raw material and he used to mix to restore churches. So uh, every time when I will see him, I will ask him to bring me some green, some uh, gold, some shimmer, some anything. And I will mix wow. my, my colors and do the eyeshadow. I mean, and in the 70s, was well, that eyeliner and um, and green or blue, the, those were the colors for yeah. the eyeshadow. And um, and this is how uh, we used to make, uh, we, we didn't have access to. And the mascara was, um, we were able to buy that, but was like, um, like a tiny little toothbrush. And you put water and you mix that solid um, dark uh, product and really? we used to put, uh, yes, we didn't have a mascara because the, the mascara with the wand was probably in the 80s uh, on the market. But in the 70s, uh, this is how we use um, mascara. So it was very, how should I say, um, th that was the beginning of, uh, of makeup, uh, not skills. 
in in beauty school mostly in Romania was um, skincare was very big because we had to study biology and chemistry because people that had acne they will not go to a dermatologist they used to go to a esthetician and treat them uh, they used to go to a dermatologist if they had major skin problem eczema or dermatitis or stuff like that so um, mm. it was way more deep uh, um, study on skincare in Romania because makeup we didn't have makeup products and when I came here I went and I took a few classes for makeup that's but so yeah, interesting that to was, me yeah. that's interesting how like you had such a big focus on skincare but then makeup was kind of unheard yes. of that's really bizarre yes. Yes, but uh, because there were no makeup products, that that was the problem. Uh, but Jacob, I have to say one thing. I think if you are passionate about something, for instance, I was passionate. I will. I was doing the eyebrow, uh, facial, body waxing, but eyebrow really intrigued me, and I started to develop this technique on how to shape eyebrows uh, uh, using the golden ratio. And I wanted to do a perfect work. And you have to at least, I don't know if you read The Outlier by um, I haven't. Um, Max. Okay, you should, um, you should buy Gladwell, the book. Right? Ma- yes, Max and Gladwell is one of the best books you want to read because it shows you if you want to get the best on your craft, you have to use at least 10,000 hours practicing. Practicing is everything. Of course, you you need to have a good eye. You have to have little talent, but practicing is the most important thing in if you want to get the best in what you want. Um, so even if you are not familiar with makeup or eyebrows, you you start practicing and you will become the best. If this is your passion, you have to be passionate about. It. Mm. I definitely will. I really appreciate that. And I also appreciate you sharing that childhood memory of, of makeup with us. I really appreciate yeah. it. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. And thank you for staying awake in the oh, UK. Oh, By no. the way, I love Honestly. UK. <laughs> the UK is great. You should come and visit sometime. <laughs> well, I wanted in December, but you know, the pandemic no, has been come. I know. Yes. Such a pain. Yeah. But yes, yeah. I can it's go okay. to sleep now, yeah. finally. <laughs> Have a good night. I'm absolutely. Good night, I know. Bye, kid. Bye, Jacob. Bye, <laughs> good night, good night. everyone. Love you all. Good night. Mwah. Love you, Jacob. Bye. 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 Um, By the way, uh, I supposed to go uh, to see Jennifer, but we switched because I didn't know how long this Jennifer Lopez eyebrows, but I'm going to do her eyebrows tomorrow. But the love for you, I thought, oh. I don't know how long we'll be. Maybe we should change the appointment. Oh, my Wait, God. You just... guys, thank you. So you've rescheduled Jennifer Lopez <laughs> for us. No, I still okay. do eyebrows. I still shape eyebrows. Wow. Oh, my God. Everybody's, <laughs> my phone is blowing up. Um, thank you so much. Um, I mean, I wanted to end around 8.15. So, um, but, you know, the, the conversation is flowing. But um, I don't want to keep you too much longer because I know it's getting late anyway. Pass it to you, Daniel. Hi. This is Daniela. Um, thank you so much. Um, incredible to have you. I have worked in the beauty industry for over five years. I started within the editorial space and then I moved on um, to beauty working for Elk Cosmetics and then working at Makeup by Mario, actually. Um, I, I just left his company, but it was an incredible time there because he really spoke very highly of you. Um, and I have to say that I can tell just by um, the work that you have done with people who you have supported has really changed the way that the industry works. And I work specifically within the social media space. And I remember when I was in college, I told myself, OK, I want to work in beauty but I don't want to be an influencer, but I want to work in social media. Um, And Anastasia Beverly Hills and the way that you guys uh, propositioned yourself within the social media space really helped me identify how I activate consumers across social channels. Um, And it's where I've built my skill set from. And so I think that, you know, you guys 
did such an incredible job before being able to understand analytics and data. You were building community, um, and that's the reason for your success because you built that community from your studio and and from all of that. Um, my question for you is. Um, how does it feel like uh, TPG took a stake in your company, a minority stake in your company a few years ago, and they had also taken a stake in Elf Cosmetics um, years, almost 10 years ago. And Elf has an incredible amount of success, and it's because of the leadership of investment partners like that. How did it feel like um, to take your brand into investment? I know that that's, you know, sometimes a very difficult decision to make as a business owner, but you have been so integrated in your brand um, for your the entire existence of it. And I have to really commend you for that because being both in the editorial side of beauty and then in the corporate side, you don't see founders stay there um, often. So I wanted to ask how, how that felt like and, and huge congratulations still because that's really, really, big deal. Thank you so much. Um, um, very much, Daniela. Um, so um, <clears throat> in 2018, uh, TPG um, got a minority stake in our company. And um, TPG is a great partner because they had a, a financial experience and they give us the opportunity to still run the company uh, the way we do, because obviously we we got this company to where we got. So why we should change what it worked? So um, I, I think um, TPG uh, being such a good partner and letting us um, do the work and partner and giving us the help where we need um, and make this uh, relationship very successful. That's incredible. And congratulations again. It's so exciting to see your Thank brand you. do what it's Thank doing. You. And also know um, from people within the industry how amazing you are, not just from the people, but from artists as well. So congratulations. Thanks. I'm Daniela and um, good luck and continued success. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. And and to go back to what you said, I think our our uh, relationship and when we started in 2012 on Instagram was very sincere, very, was very authentic and was pure trying to help the artists or people that they wanted to become artists and including makeup artists such as uh, Makeup by Mario. Um, my desire at this point in my life is, of course, I need to work on my products. I love what I do. I love my work. But most importantly is I want to support other people to do what I did. Uh, I think I paved the way for so many other people in the industry. And, and I want to encourage everyone uh, to, do, to pursue their dream by telling my story. So that's the reason why I am in this clubhouse uh, by interview by Julissa, the wonderful Jalisa, because I want you guys to to follow your dream and and understand that it's a lot of work. It's not easy, but if you are willing to to put uh, work and and sacrifice many things, you are able to do it. I mean, it's the only thing is just to believe in yourself. That's it. Nothing else. Thank you so much, Anastasia. Oh my gosh, like. I'm I'm such a fan now. Uh, I mean, I already was, Thank but you. I just feel like I'm. I know you on such a deeper level, and you know the back channel. Everyone is in the chat, like, oh my god. Um, and I'm sure everyone in the audience feels the same because you guys have been sticking it out with us. Anastasia, I just want to say thank you for your time, your energy, your wisdom. You are incredible. Um, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to you. You, this was amazing. Like. It was it was far beyond my expectation. Jalisa, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm sorry if I talk too much because I always talk too much, but I I you could hear and feel my passion for what I do and the passion that I have right now to telling my story to inspire some of you or maybe all of you to to do what you love, whatever it is, makeup or anything else. <laughs>